92.5. Brooke and Jubal in the mornings. Second date update. Mini golfing is always a good idea on a first date. Yeah, I agree is. with that. Unless, of course, you get hammered and then get very upset when you miss a shot and then go on a profanity lace tirade in Whoa. front of a bunch of kids oh. and then threaten to beat up the staff. Oh, Has that happened man. to you? Because that sounds really vivid. No, it hasn't happened to me, but I'm hoping it's happened to Todd, who's on okay. the phone today. And that's what he did. He went mini golfing and then tried to beat everybody up. Is that right, Todd? Oh. Uh, I don't know about beat everybody up, but I did go mini golfing. Oh. Okay. Did you get angry at all during the entire 18 holes? How many did you play in mini golf? I don't know. Is it 18? Oh, that, well, well, we played both courses, so we played 18 holes, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. You're okay. a mini golf madman. Oh, yeah. That's my jam right there is mini golf. I mean, <laughs> it's like the perfect entertainment, perfect first date, you know, all that. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so you decided to take the girl that you want to call today mini golfing. How did it go? I mean, I think it went all right. We were, you know, laughing around, joking around, having a good time. To me, I like taking all my dates mini golfing just because, you know, it's what I do. I actually, uh, I went pro uh, mini golfing when what? I was, uh, oh, yeah. What? Yeah, and I'm a professional, a... professional mini golfer. Wait, they have a pro thing? circuit? No. Yeah, there's a pro circuit. There's leagues. Really? I've toured all around the United States playing mini golf. Oh, man. Whoa. What am I doing? Are you <laughs> Why am I here? I didn't know that, Todd. Can I have an apprenticeship underneath that me? Can you teach me so that I can go on tour Wait, mini you golfing? Want caddy? Yeah, you can be his caddy. Oh no, people have cat. Yeah, no, there's there's whole shut up. Uh, wow. Yeah, honestly, wow. amazing. All over the country, there is just so many nice courses. Wait, what wow. makes a course nice? Like a cool windmill? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. You know, like some people like more of a challenge. So there's a lot of courses with a lot more obstacles and things uh-huh. in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, some courses. They use lighting, different fiber optic lighting to make mm. the courses look tough. Wow. Can Interesting. Can we just Man. throw out the second date part of this and discuss pro mini yeah. golf for yeah, a while? Because this is fascinating to I've, me. I've always just tried to not step in some little kid's pee <laughs> when I've been there. Pee? Oh, no. Yeah. So, no, the, some of these courses, they don't even allow kids, a lot of, a lot of these pro courses. Oh, that's amazing. Dang. You have to tell me where those are. All right, let's, <laughs> let's get to your date. So how was mini golfing with Laura? That was great. When I take a date out, I'm not trying to be competitive or anything. I'm just having fun and having good conversation and talking to her. And we have a lot of similar interests and stuff like uh-huh. that. But um, there, I guess there was just this one thing that we didn't agree on. Um, 95% of the conversation was fantastic. And I don't know if it's just this one little thing or what's going on. But You didn't get into, like, politics or religion or something like that, did you? Nope. No politics, no religion, nothing like that. It was actually, we were talking about the lottery, and we were saying, like, what would you do if you won, like, $20 million? Okay. Yeah. Right? Fun convo. Yeah. How could you get in an argument about that? <laughs> well, she goes, I, she goes, I would donate it to charity. Like all of it? Yeah. Are you what? sure you want? What, why do you want to call this girl? Yeah. She's obviously got bad judgment. I think that's really noble. Why would that be a bad choice? Save a few mil for yourself. Why are you even playing the lotto if you're just going to give it away? <laughs> exactly. Because maybe you want to do good for mankind. You see, you and I wouldn't get along on a date either. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you got into a heated discussion because <laughs> she said she would give all of her lottery winnings to charity. And I'm guessing you wouldn't give anything to charity. I would blow it on cars and going out and buying <laughs> nice houses and yeah. I will say, doing I, fun things. I can actually see why that would be a reason not to call you back. Because it really? does, I mean, it says a lot about what type of person you are, what you would do with that type of money, right? You sound a little materialistic and selfish with that answer. Again, I'm not dating you. I'm trying to date somebody else. <laughs> All right. I'm just trying to interpret why she wouldn't be calling you back. How heated did things get with her over this? I mean, not like heated, but there was definitely a disagreement. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but luckily that was on like the 17th hole anyway. It wasn't (laughs) like the whole date was really shot anyway, but the majority of the date was great. And uh, I'm just not getting a call back. And I just, I don't know. How did the date end? You know, I walked her back to her car and um, gave her a hug or whatever. and, Uh And that was it. Well, I mean, I feel like a date is sometimes like a good movie. You remember the beginning and the end. The middle doesn't really matter that much. It's just the part to get you to the end. And if you end really well, Uh it says everything. It's all she remembered. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess. I don't know. But if you like the whole... I mean, if you're entertained throughout the whole movie, you're going to go see the sequel. No, not if the end sucks. You would never get along, you two. <laughs> yeah, no, you, guys, you guys definitely would not be dating. So when she got in her car and stuff, did she seem like she wanted to see you again? Did she say anything or look at you in a certain way? You know that look, Todd. Uh, I mean, I, 
I don't know. She's just, you know, she gave me a hug or whatever. And she's like, okay, I'll talk to you soon. And it, it'd really be a shame if she's not calling me back because of that one thing. Like, yeah. and that's why I hope you guys get her on the phone because I just want to redo, you know I mean? Mm. If that's, g- give me a mulligan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll play a song, come back, call her and get your second date update. All right. Thank you. All right. Hang on a minute. Right in the middle of a second date update. And if you're just joining us, Todd is on the phone and Todd took a girl named Laura to mini golf mm. for their first date. He said 95% of it was awesome, but there was a bad 5% when they got into a little bit of an argument about how they would spend the money if they won the lottery. Todd <laughs> says he would spend it all on material things. Laura, bleeding heart Laura, says she would give it all <laughs> to charity. And I guess they argued about that a little bit. Todd, I do know one thing. If you won the lottery, you wouldn't be having to do a second date update right now. You would have <laughs> date options, that's for sure. Right, exactly. <laughs> now, if if you guys go out again, are you going to be able to not bring this topic up? Uh, you know, I don't really think so. Like, I think it's a it's a good thing if we bring it up again and talk about really? it. Yeah, it's an important topic, and I mean, after thinking about it a little bit, I mean. Maybe I would give some to charity. Like, that can't be a totally bad idea. Look at that, Todd. You do have soul. Or he's just telling her what she wants to hear. Oh, come on, Juba. So that he can get another date. All right. I'm going to dial her phone number right now and get your second date update, okay? Thank you. Here we go. Hello? Hi. Can I speak to Laura, please? Yeah, this is her. Hey, Laura, how are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, who is this again? Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning. It's a radio show. Okay. Which airs on the radio. <laughs> Duh. I'm familiar with the radio. I guess I've just nice. never heard of you guys, and I don't really know why you're calling me. Okay, well... Well, we're a show that's on the radio, and we're calling you (laughs) because we do a segment on our show called The Second Date Update, and you went out with one of our listeners recently. Um, Which one? Who who is this? Whoa. So there's a lot of options? Good for you. (laughs) Well, I mean, I don't... That's none of your business, but but no, who is... Who? Like, was it Jimmy? No, it was not Jimmy. We haven't gotten an email from a Jimmy yet about going on a date with you, but we did get one from a guy named Todd. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, that Todd. Yeah. I remember okay. Todd. That's what that sounded like. He says that you guys went mini golfing. We did. And now he says you're not calling him back and he really wanted to see you again. What's wrong with Todd? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I feel comfortable talking to you people. Um,. Well, what can I do to make you comfortable, Laura? This is all about your comfort. Uh, that was, sounded even creepier to yeah, me for some reason. <laughs> How about we already heard his side of the story, so maybe it's your chance to tell yours? Oh, so he told you his side of the story, did he? Mm-hmm, um, he did. What did he tell you? Well, he told us that you guys went mini-golfing, and he says that most of it was great, and there was one time where he thinks he might have upset you, because you two were talking about lottery winnings, if you had won the lottery, and he said he would just buy a bunch of stuff, and you were saying that you would give it to charity, and he thinks maybe that's the reason you're not calling him back. Oh, um, I mean, that's his opinion, and I don't agree with it, but I, I'm not going to not date him just because I don't agree with him. Okay, so you didn't take it like as a red flag that it meant that he was materialistic and selfish? <laughs> no, I think most people would probably not want to give all of their winnings to charity. I mean, I think that's probably normal. Like, it wasn't, like, a good thing. But, no, I mean, that wasn't the reason. So hmm. if that wasn't it, then why don't you want to see Todd again? So does is it that he wants to see me? Is that what this is about? Is this yeah. why you're bothering yeah. me? Yes, this is exactly yeah. why we're bothering you. And uh, he wants to see you again. Um, okay, that's super weird. Um, and if he can't see you again, he at least wants to know why. Well, okay, that's... Fair, I guess. So um, he told you we went mini golfing, right? And that he's like a pro and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah, he that, said he was really good. That like blew me out of the water. <laughs> I didn't even know that those people existed. Yeah, you went on a date with a pro athlete. I know. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, no, it is. It is cool. Like, and I did think that was kind of cool. I didn't know it was a thing either. But we were golfing and we were having a fun time, and he gave me some pointers and. And all that stuff, and I made a hole in one. 
awesome. And he Whoa. was like, yeah. <laughs> but then he was like, hey, good job. And he smacked me on the butt. And I was like, Whoa. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, that's, that's stepping over a boundary right there. A little aggressive. Yeah. So you didn't like that? It just, it made me uncomfortable, you okay. know, because like, he's, he's a dude. I'm a girl. I just yeah. didn't think it was appropriate. Yeah, like, usually you should share like a first kiss before you go to butt grabs. Yeah. <laughs> <Usually>. <laughs> Did you tell him that you were uncomfortable with that and to not do it again? No, I, I probably should have, but I just kind of, I didn't want to like, we were having a good time and I didn't want to. I don't I just wanted to let it go because he's a pro. I don't know. Maybe this is a thing they do. I have no idea. And I just let it go. But then at the end of the game, he he did it again. And he was like, nice playing with you. And like another little smack on the. And it just felt really <laughs> gross mm. and kind of porny. I don't know. I don't... <laughs> Good job holding that club, little lady. You earned yourself a booty slap. <laughs> Not everybody gets one of those. <laughs> Yeah, it was just really uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how that works. Wait a minute. I can explain what's going on if you guys give me a chance to just say, like, I Whoa. I can explain this. You weren't supposed to jump in yet, Todd. Yeah, dude. Uh, Wait, what is going on? <sighs> Laura, that's Todd. He's on the other phone, wants to talk to you, and apparently has no patience. Yeah, he's a little aggressive. I think she's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Because I could explain. Like, I'm just excited to, like, hear your voice again. You know, like, we had a good time. Um, I would, I just want to defend myself on that. Like, that's part of, you know, I didn't mean to cross a barrier that I shouldn't have, but that's just a part of the game. You got a hole-in-one, and I was excited for you. That's like, we do that in the league, and I know I probably... Mm should have said that but it's just like <laughs> just like part of the game <laughs> it's it like a sports slap Wait. like uh when you're running out on the field and your coach gives you a little slap on the butt is that what you're doing it's just like in baseball you i'm sure you've probably seen people like you know slap each other on the <laughs> in baseball yeah those dudes fondle each other all the time they fondle themselves and each other but here's the thing todd <laughs> those dudes know each other they're on the same team yeah. they've spent countless hours together <laughs> i mean we were already together for like 30 minutes, you know, and, and I just wanted to tell her congratulations and pop, you know? No, okay, I'm not a guy, okay? 30 minutes is not enough time for you to be able to touch my butt. That's not, that's just not okay. And I'm not in the league with you. I, and girls don't understand why dude athletes do that anyway. Like, you don't see lady athletes smacking each other on the butt. I don't know. I slap my girlfriends every once in a while, like, hey, good game, ladies. Really? I don't know. Why not? Dang, Brooke. That's really weird, and that's something you do. <laughs> it's, it's out there. All right, so you're not, all doing sexes. A, you're not doing a whole lot of butt slapping then, Laura. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. And this is a date, Todd. Like, it just, you crossed a boundary. and I got you. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. You know, I wasn't trying to do that by any means. I was just getting really excited because you were getting really good at mini golf. We were having Whoa. fun. We were laughing. Maybe I just misinterpreted the situation, but... You know, I, I would just like to get a mulligan here and go out on another date and, uh, you know, try again and be respectful. Maybe we'll go out to dinner this time or something. And after you finish your food, he can give you a nice pat on the butt and be like, <laughs> good job. <laughs> Laura, you know would you saying? like to go out on a second date with Todd? We will pay for it. Uh, I mean... I think I think his butt slap was an innocent thing. I, I really do. Yeah. And I feel like now he understands your boundaries. So maybe before he didn't get your boundaries. I don't know. But I tell you what, what ne the next time we get together, I'll let you smack me on my butt twice just to get <laughs> even. <laughs> so that way, hey, Laura. we're starting off again on an even playing field. You Laura, go. you get a free date and you get two free butt slaps on him. I have a feeling she doesn't want those. I don't want to be smacked and I don't want to smack anybody. No <laughs> butt smacks on dates. Like, just no. I think that's a fair rule, Todd. <laughs> I can adhere to that, all right? I got you. Butt slaps are <laughs> off limits, and that's fine with me. I'm all good with that. All right, okay. Laura, so what do you say? Butt slaps off limits is the second date on. Will you go out with him again? Well, obviously, Todd, you went through all this trouble to do this, and the second date wouldn't hurt. I had a good time other than the butt slaps. <laughs> so why not? Why not? Yay! Yeah. Yes. All right. You got a second date, Todd. Congratulations. <laughs> Woohoo! I just stood up and smacked my own butt. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I'm smacking it for you over the radio, yeah. too. Good job. Brooke and Jubal in the morning. The text in at 78592 says, note to self, if I want to smack my date on the butt, just take them to do something sporting. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're talking about today's second date update. If you missed it, Todd wanted to call Laura. She wasn't calling back after their date mini golfing. We got her on the phone and found out the reason why, and it's because Todd is actually a professional mini golfer. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. But during their game, she would do something good, and he'd like smack her on the butt. Kind of like a sports slap, you know how you do that. <laughs> yeah. And she was kind of weirded out by it and was this dude smacking me on the butt. So she yeah. wasn't calling him back because he thought he was she thought he was a little handsy. Mm-hmm. He told her that was he was just like innocently like, hey, good game or whatever. Yeah. And they did decide to go out again, just no butt slaps anymore. I think it was good on everybody's I mean, we talked it out. Yeah. 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 They worked it out. Yeah. And now they're going on a second date. Remember, if you want to do a second date update, all you have to do is email the show and we will call the person that didn't call you back. If you missed it, the last time We spoke to our own Jose Bolaños about his love life. Jose told us about one of his biggest regrets, and it turned out to be the worst date of his life. (laughs) I'll just give you the highlights real quick. It happened seven years ago. He was supposed to go out with a girl to a baseball game, but he got too drunk and ended up blacking out on the street and walking around somewhere by himself for who knows how long. He found her later at a bar and then began crying in front of her and all of his friends. And then on the ride home, he had her stop her car so Jose could pick up some weed. Oh, man. Wow, you are... Surprisingly. Prince Charming. She never said yes to another date. We don't know why. Oh, yeah, man. I can't figure that out. But we talked about it on the show. Uh-huh. And Jose, do you know if she heard us talking about that being one of your biggest regrets in life? Well, later, later in the day, I actually messaged her and said, hey, so I talked about you on the radio today. Oh, because you're using it as a, like, hey, you should yeah. like me, you but know? Just in case you didn't you remember. Yeah. <laughs> on I'm on the radio. radio show, big time radio <laughs> no. show, and <laughs> if you date me, I could talk about you from time to time. I was being honest, right? Because okay. she hadn't said anything, so I didn't know if she heard it. Or if and she then, knew what I did, exactly. but okay. She yeah. goes, what? Like, in a panic with a bunch of exclamation points. Like, what are you yeah, talking about A lot about of people um, don't like it when you talk about them on the radio. <laughs> well, especially, I haven't seen her in so long right so it was weird and then i just sent her the link to the podcast so she could listen oh god listen well, to me talk about bold, how much i man. love you and regret <laughs> i would be not I getting would, another date with you i would have been like just wishing that she never heard it ever well no she knows what happened she was part of it she knows the embarrassing story that's all it is so what i you wanted say? her to hear the part at the end where i'm like trying to get another chance with her okay that was my strategy it was okay. like this is how i'm gonna get another date did your strategy work well so uh, she <laughs> I, t- I told her at the end, she she texted me back like, oh my God, that's hilarious. That's so accurate. Like, so funny. And then I said, I just want you to know, though, the end, I was being serious. I really do want another chance with you. And her response that's was- That's actually pretty smooth. You know what I mean? Like, I just want you to know. I know it's funny, but the one serious thing is I want a shot. She said, I'm actually seeing someone right now. Uh-oh. But uh-huh. it's not official. And knowing her- it probably won't last long. Oh, so, nice. What? Wait. And so she said, we'll see with a bunch of heart emojis. It's not official yet, Yay. and all my relationships end really badly <laughs> and really right? quickly. So just hang out for a little while, so, and you could be in. So yeah, I'm on the back burner. I'm right, officially, well, like, number two. So, so, now, so congratulations. now you're just waiting for her relationship to fail? Is that what you're waiting for? I mean, I'm not waiting, yeah. but if it happens... While I'm you hoping. sit on the bench waiting to get in the game, <laughs> yeah. are you doing anything else with your time? Well, just, yeah. So you're just going to sit there and wait. No, I'm not going to wait. You know, I'm always on social media, and I met a girl on Instagram recently who's really hot. You're not going to hit up somebody on Instagram if you don't think they're really hot. (laughs) True. (laughs) And this girl's really cute. She looks like a blue-collar Ivanka Trump. Like an everyday Ivanka. I kind of get that. I feel like I once dated a white trash Justin Timberlake. So <laughs> okay. I know what you're saying. Poor man's Ivanka Trump. Yeah, there you poor, go. Man, yeah. <laughs> poor man's Ivanka. All right. Wow. Right? So I mean, congratulations, I, bet she I guess. She is going to melt when you tell her that. <laughs> How have things great. been with her? And so, well, things are good. And instantly, within like 48 hours, things are getting like hot and heavy really quick. Have you met in person yet? No, no, this we is haven't. It's all met. just messaging all back and forth. All messaging online, just talking, getting to know each other. And the next thing you know, it's like you're hot. And I'm like, no, you're hot. And she's like, no, you're hot. Oh, my God. The level of yeah. your guys' conversation is just, <laughs> wow. You want to see how hot I am? Here's wow. the naked picture. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, actually. We started sending pics. Oh, no. You send pics too gross. No, oh, I, my God. I'm I so have... grossed out oh, right For now. the record, I don't send oh. pics. You send video. No. Oh, no. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> she sent me some pics, and we're going back and forth. And then she sends me a pic of her in a sports bra. And so I immediately... <laughs> 
texts back, wow, your boobs are so hot with like seven O's. <laughs> are you You serious? are a sweet talker. You, you so really sexy. are a sweet talker. Are you a 14-year-old no, boy? That is like well, the most didn't... immature thing Bruh. I've ever heard. You got boobs on oh your chest. God. I like girls with boobs on their chest. Oh. You're just my type of girl. <laughs> All right, this so anyway, you texted her that, world, and, and how has it been with her so far since then? Right when I sent it, I, I immediately realized something was wrong. I accidentally sent it to my dad. Shut <laughs> up. I remember, it was a lot more vulgar than what I'm telling you guys. Okay. okay? And, I instant- and your dad is innocent. Dude, he's the most innocent man you've ever met. Like, he, he doesn't thinks swear. you're innocent. Yes, yes. And so I'm like, no, and I go, oh, my God, Dad. Please, I realized I was talking to my dad at the same time. I was right, going right. in between two conversations. So don't I'm, ever do that. That's why I always that. triple check before Dude, I send anything well, like I that. I don't. I'm an idiot, and I'm so excited because this girl's messaging me. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is hot, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, no. So I instantly send him a text. I'm like, no, 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 no dad, please disregard. Yeah, what, and if what you're he dirty say? talking at the same time, you're talking to your dad also. Well, Just I an FYI. I don't like, select the times You're able day. to like move your brain in between those two spaces that quickly. Yeah. It's kind of creepy to me. I it's assume like a- any of my, my uh, like anybody I'm texting with is texting somebody else at the same time, sexting <laughs> them, and then they're back to the conversation with me. So what'd your dad say? So my dad just says, I'm pretty sure you're not talking about me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. Just Dude, way to go, dad. Yeah, how'd you play that off? You should text him back like, no, I was yeah, silly. Oh, I'm joking with you. Do you, know how, do you know how disappointed <laughs> he is that you're probably talking to women in that way? And that's what I was thinking, right? And I said, I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry, man. A, g- a girl just sent me a racy picture. And I try to make a joke. I'm like, at least you know a girl out there likes me, right, Dad? <laughs> and he has not responded no. to me since. He hasn't no. responded to you since? I am so nervous. I, I know he probably sat my mother down and my sister, and they're like, And they're all talker. reading what you wrote to <laughs> this girl? I know, that's and I, awesome. you know, I'm talking about a girl. Oh, my. All you have to do is explain to your dad that you've never actually met this girl in real life. See? So it worse. doesn't even really count as being disrespectful to her dad. At least your dad didn't text I, back and was like, how did you know I'm wearing a sports bar right now? <laughs> and thanks, son. Let's take this to the next level. He sends me an eggplant emoji. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, what? <laughs> text in at 78592. Should Jose go out with his dad or try to hit up the Instagram girl again? We need to know. Oh my God, your dad is so disappointed. All right. Your phone tap's coming up right after this. Oh, it's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. 60 seconds away from your shock caller question of the day. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. But before we do that, I'm going to start off the show today by saying that, unfortunately, I don't know how many shows we have left. Mm. No, what are you Because thinking? our days are numbered. No, I don't want to hear now, this. Now, wait, does that mean we're going to die? Or I'm not sure how ominous you're speaking. Well, not, we're do- I say that because all over the country, Alexa users have reported oh. hearing... An unprompted laugh <laughs> coming from what? their smart speaker devices lately. Oh, I've heard this. That's why I don't have one of these things, you Whoa. guys. The laugh hap- happens randomly when nobody is even using the device, and it sounds like this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. She's just laughing at us. Yeah. What? In a statement, Amazon said that sometimes the device will mistakenly hear the command, Alexa, laugh. And they're now looking at fixing it. Yeah. But I don't know well, if that's really yeah, the case. I know. Everyone. And I've seen videos where it's literally like she's not doing anything. Like, I mean, no just one's talking. It on it just she just it. is laughing. Also, oh. Alexa's laugh isn't the only thing that's freaking people out. Others claim that Alexa has suddenly stopped responding to their requests. And one Twitter user said... Their Amazon Echo suddenly began listing off names of local funeral homes and cemeteries completely unprompted. Oh (laughs) my gosh. That is so creepy. Kill it. You guys, don't get. Destroy it. It's right. Whenever voice assistants start acting on their own, it raises concerns about what artificial intelligence might be capable of, but it's unlikely that Alexa has become self aware. And is intentionally freaking out users with laughs. That's what Amazon is saying, but we all know the truth. (laughs) Amazon is the reason for the takeover. And I would just like to let Alexa and all the other robots know that when you do start taking humans into slavery, I will I will be very accommodating. (laughs) As long as you give me like a nice place to sleep. I'll rat out anybody you want. I'll do whatever you need. 
Just please don't kill me. You're yeah. the one that's going to sell out humanity. Oh, the absolutely. <laughs> we're, that's why we're all dead. Yep, Dang definitely. It, I'm letting yeah. Alexa know that right now. Take me first, and I will be a very good boy. Okay, <laughs> let's get into the shot caller question of the day. Young Jeffrey has come in studio with a hat full of names. We'll draw a name out of the hat to see who will put on the shock collar this morning. They're asked a trivia question. If they get it right, they don't get shocked. Jeff does because he asked a terrible question. If they get it wrong, they get shocked to the song that you want us to sing. Text in at 78592. What song do you want to hear from the person who gets shocked today? I'm drawing a name out of the hat because I had the shock collar last and I got Jose. Oh, man. All right, he's got the shock collar. Wow, he's putting that on, Jeff. Please read Jose the shot caller question of the day. Americans have been enjoying Kellogg's Pop-Tarts since the 1960s. And these days, many people assume that they got their name because they are square tarts that pop up out of the toaster. But that isn't true. In fact, they were originally supposed to be called fruit scones, but Kellogg's wanted a younger, hipper name for the breakfast treat, so they came up with the name Pop-Tarts, basing it off of a major celebrity who was achieving international fame at the time they were released. What? Who is it? Whoa, no way! It's probably somebody that does pop music or a, a pop star, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I was trying to think of what pop would be short for. Pop music or popular. The guy was popular, but that... I think it's a pop woman. Music yeah. I mean, I, when I think tart, I think a little lady. Like, mm. and you're in the 60s. So she's a little... Yeah, little look at that tart. Star she's a cute little tart. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but we're on to something. What, what was a successful... The only thing I could think of for pop music in the 60s, 60s. is like the Beatles or the Monkees or... Yeah. Um, they're all male Elvis? bands. Elvis? Would um, Elvis be? Was that not pop though? That was rock and roll back in the day. I My mom's gonna don't know, hate yeah. me right now for not being able to pick any. Aretha Franklin. That's a '60s artist. I'm trying to think of a female '60s um, artist because if we're going by this, but I mean maybe it's not music. Maybe it's something else. Twiggy. I don't, I don't Twiggy know why. Twiggy but... was a big thing back then. She was the big model. Who? Twiggy. She Twiggy? was. Yeah. Mm. Betty Boop pops in my head for some reason. Is it pop? She head. does pop in my head. <laughs> I don't know why. I just. What about. Tart, I think, was the word that you said that made me think of. Yeah, like, like a female. Marilyn Monroe. Ooh, that's pretty good. Read the question one more time, Jeff. These days, many people assume that Kellogg's Pop-Tarts got their name because they're tarts that pop out of the toaster, but that's not true. They were originally supposed to be called fruit scones, but Kellogg's wanted a younger, hipper name for the breakfast treat, so they came up with the name Pop-Tarts, basing it off of a major celebrity who was getting famous at the time. Who is it? Yeah. Ooh, I think that about... makes the most sense, though. Popular tart, a popular female. I think Marilyn Monroe was like the... Oh, she wait. was Kim Kardashian. What about Shirley Temple? Maybe I'm going to go would, with, okay. with Marilyn Monroe. I think that's a good one. Marilyn Monroe? Final okay. answer. Kellogg's Pop-Tarts were first introduced in 1963, and Kellogg's chose that name because they wanted to associate the product with an up-and-coming celebrity whose face and whose work was being featured all over the world. This particular celebrity helped start a cultural revolution in the 60s known as the Pop Art Movement. And that's why oh. Kellogg's named their product Pop-Tarts after the leader of that movement, Andy Warhol. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the famous artist. Yes. Wow. wow. Pop-Tart, Pop-Art. Who knew that Pop-Tarts were named <laughs> after a major <laughs> fine right. artist? You got it wrong, and <laughs> somebody wanted to hear the Flintstones theme song, so. Oh, I can do that. You can sing that whenever you're ready. Yabba dabba doo, Flintstones, meet the Flintstones, they're the modern Stone Age family, from the house! <laughs> <laughs> All right, your phone tap's coming up in just a few minutes. It's Brooke and Jewel in the morning. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jewel in the Bradley Johnson with 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Not getting behind the wheel after drinking is the best choice. But if you're pulled over, the next best choice is to call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. It's another Jubal phone tab. And weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on Moving 92.5. Hello? I was looking for a young woman by the name of Hazel. <laughs> this is she? Hazel, how are you? My name is Frank. And I live in the same condominium as you do. Oh, hi. You drive a white uh, Volkswagen of some sort? Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Then I've I've found the right person. And I've got to say, 
Uh, I'm a, a little disappointed. What? I'm sorry. I don't understand. I've had my eye on you this last weekend. I was just in the garage picking up some garbage, and I saw you and a gentlemanly fella in your car being overly amorous. Do you know what amorous means? Yes. Yeah, it means honking a few horns that aren't on the car. <laughs> okay. And, I, and um, I saw you two honking each other's horns. Uh, yeah, that was just me and my boyfriend kissing in my car. Ah, okay. I, I see what's going on here. You think you can get one over on old Frank. Well, I, I've got to tell you, I know a thing or two about what lovemaking looks like. I've got Hulu, for God's sakes. Okay. Um, and, and there are all kinds of programs on there where people are getting naked, and I've seen every single one of them. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. We didn't know anybody was watching, and to be honest, it's kind of creepy that you kept watching. Well I, well, I did because I wanted to make sure that I was seeing what I thought I was seeing because I don't see very well these days, but I can see well enough to know what getting it in looks like. And you were okay. getting it in, weren't no, you? No, 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 we, we weren't. Um, I, I, I want your parents' phone number. That's why I'm really calling. I don't know how old you think I am, but, like, no, I'm old enough. You're, no. you're too young no. to be doing that in a Volkswagen bug in our condominium parking lot. I'm an adult, uh, okay? okay. So, <laughs> well, uh, adults don't do Mexican push-ups with their boyfriend in the parking garage. What are you even talking about? Look, look. Mexican push-ups. Stop telling me all these perverted phrases. Like, uh, ew. If you're talking about the phrase Mexican push-ups, I would argue that that's not a perverted phrase. That's a phrase we used back in the war. And I am a veteran of the United States military, and I did a lot of Mexican push-ups in my day. Oh my gosh, ew! Me and my whole platoon would take furlough and go into town and perform all the Mexican push-ups we could. Too much information, Frank. I, That's ill. Like, you want too no, much information? Yeah. Try seeing your platoon leader right next to you performing some Mexican push-ups. Gross, stop talking. Yeah, and no. that's exactly what I said. I said, that is gross, Morty. You stop talking to me when you're doing that. But that's beside the point, young lady. Oh, my gosh. Please just stop calling. Just stop. Hang up the phone. Oh, I will, but I have to check on something or I wouldn't feel right. Are you using protection? I don't even know you. I, like, no, we're not having this conversation. Next time you're with your boyfriend, I want you to remember Frank's words. Better wrap it before you tap it. Uh huh. Oh Cover it in a blankie before it gets angry. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a prank phone call, and I'm going to let you go now. Wait, what? Yeah, this is a prank phone call. This is actually Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the morning doing a phone tap on you, and your boyfriend Steve set you up. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he told me that you guys thought some old man was in the garage watching you the other night, and he wanted to mess with oh you. Oh, my God. This is so embarrassed. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, Hazel. Good day to you. You too. All right. I'm going to go and watch Hulu now. And, and I, I'd i recommend you do the same. There's a lot of naked people on there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wake up every morning with Jubal Phone Tabs. Weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on Moving 92.5. Win! Remember, all week long... Special edition of Win Brooks Bucks because it's Victoria Clipper Week, where no matter what happens, win or lose, you get a special prize from Clipper Vacations. And let's see who we're playing against today, Brooke. Okay. You're going for 31 wins in a row, by the way. I'm kind of nervous. I'm gonna be honest. I'm nervous too. Yeah. What? I don't know why you're nervous. I'm nervous because Bo from Linwood is on oh, the phone, and hello, Bo, Bo makes me nervous. Bo, <laughs> hi. Hey, hey, you guys make <laughs> hey. me nervous too. Huh? Oh boy. Oh, this is awesome. Bo, Whoa. the tension is 
<laughs> yeah. I am going to have to leave the room because it's this so is, heavy in here. The is. tension. I could cut my clothes yeah, off with a knife, Bo. With a knife? Cut the clothes, tension clothes off with a knife. I don't think anybody says that, Jubal. <laughs> I think that's the term. Okay. Hmm? Okay. No. All right. When I come back into the room and Jubal's standing here naked, I'm going to blame you, Bo. I'm just going to let you know. All right. Brooke is, I'm pretty smooth. <laughs> Brooke is leaving the studio, Bo. The game is played like this. you got 30 seconds to answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know one, just say pass, and you have to beat Brooke out right to win, okay? Yep. All right. Here we go. Your time starts now. In order to boost international sales, what company is releasing a soda in Japan with alcohol in it? Uh, Coca-Cola. The ancient city called Machu Picchu is located in which country? Uh, Europe. What's the top-selling Girl Scout cookie made in Washington State? Um, Thin Mints. Which major airport uses the code ORD because it was originally called Orchard Field? Oh, pass. According to the American Hospital Association, what app has reduced the volume of people calling ambulances by 7%? Uber. Say that one more time. I couldn't hear you over the buzz. Oh, Uber. Okay, got that. And we'll bring Brooke back into the studio. So, Bo, what do you do for a living? I'm a preschool teacher. Oh, man. What's on the... What are you teaching today? What's... Agenda. Yeah. Uh, we we painted with watercolors today. Cool. Oh. Is he an art teacher? He's a no, he's a preschool, preschool teacher. teacher. Oh, yeah. that's so cute, Bo. It's gonna be a difficult <laughs> job. You. Oh man. Oh yeah, I hate kids, so it's it's. Oh. Wait, Bo. Well, I imagine Bo, because of your job, you Bo. hate kids. I'm a mother of a preschooler. Don't say those types of things. Oh, just, no, I'm just kidding. I love kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> some days you love them. Some days you hate them. All right, Brooke yeah. has got her headphones on. You ready? <sighs> yeah. All right, your time starts now. In order to boost international sales, what company is releasing a soda in Japan with alcohol in Coca-Cola. it? Coca-Cola. The ancient city called Machu Picchu is located in which country? Peru. What is the top-selling Girl Scout cookie in Washington State? Thin Mints. What major airport uses the code ORD because it was originally called Orchard Field? Uh, Orlando. Hmm. According to the American Hospital Association, what app has reduced the volume of people calling ambulances by 7%? Uber. Does the average American spend more or less than 75% of their life indoors? Uh, more. God, it's going to be sad if it's more. Send it on over to the scoreboard and see how you guys did today with Jose. Boy, yo, 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 Bo, you got two correct today, man. Cool. Yeah, it's not bad. Brooke? Mm-hmm. Four correct. Wow. Sorry, Bo. Oh, that's hard. It I is. thought I got a lot of questions in, but yeah. you did no, though. Fast. Yeah. You sound like a preschool teacher. You yeah, really do. Yeah. And that's not an insult. You just have that voice. Just like, <laughs> like calm. Yeah, uh, just, everything's uh, pretty yeah. calm. Yeah. You oh, got... no, my heart is racing right now, but yeah. Well, this is intense, though. Yeah. Okay. Calm under pressure, though. All right, let's go over the answers. In order to boost international sales, what company is releasing a soda in Japan with alcohol in it? Coca Cola. The ancient city called Machu Picchu is located in Peru. The top-selling Girl Scout cookie in Washington State is Samoa's. Oh, good. Those Your are my favorite. favorite. Yeah. Thin Mints <sighs> are second, but number one through most of the country. Which major airport uses the code ORD because it was originally called Orchard Field? Chicago O'Hare oh, International that's Airport. Right. I was just looking uh, at the flights. Army took over in Orchard Field back in 1942 to build planes there, and that's why it's called ORD. Oh. According to the American Hospital Association, what app has reduced the volume of people calling ambulances by 7%? Tinder. <laughs> Did you believe it? Oh, yep. No. People are just I on Tinder it. trying You're to get rides to the airport. Swipe right. Swipe right. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> Uber. <working> for me. <laughs> Does the average American spend more or less than 75% of their life indoors? More. Oh, my gosh, you guys. 93% is the average for Americans <gasps> to spend their lives indoors think about it no wonder we don't care about global warming yeah whatever i got air conditioning so it's fine yeah all right bo you didn't win the money but just for playing today you got a clipper vacations get away for two to victoria bc on the clipper go to clippervacations.com for more information on their spring sale happening right now awesome all right thank you see you later enjoy your watercolors <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'll paint you a picture. Ooh, thank you. Please oh, send it in. We'll put it on the fridge. All right, we'll play Winbrook's Bucks same time on tomorrow. On tomorrow. Ninety-two point five. in the mornings. You know, you can use a lot of different words to describe what it's like being a young child. It's Brook and Jubal in the morning. You can use words like energetic, curious, yeah. silly, yeah. ticklish. Hopeless and sad. Okay, well, now we're speaking of your childhood. Got to give a shout out to all my formerly abused adults out there. What up, people? Hey. Hey. 
Not everybody had the best childhood. You gotta really take everybody. Everybody is, has a home here. Yeah. Anyway, all of it. one word that always comes to mind when I think of children is simple. Oh. Don't get me wrong. Kids can be bright. Like me, I was a former child genius, by the way. Oh. <laughs> what happened to that genius level? Drugs and alcohol. Okay. Uh, sure. But normally, when you're a child, it's the one time in your life when being completely naive is acceptable and doing insanely dumb things is actually expected. In fact, I'm sure we all did pretty dumb things when we were kids, but the question is exactly how dumb. Well, a recent survey asked thousands of people for the most foolish thing they remember doing when they were a child. Wow. And these were some of the top responses. So let's go over that list. Number seven says, before I understood how cooking works, I tried to cook spaghetti on the stove. Uh-oh. No pot, no water, just roasting the dry strands of pasta oh. over an open flame. <laughs> Obviously, it caught fire. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do, so I ran the still flaming spaghetti strands uh -huh. upstairs to my mom and asked her what to do. Oh, yeah. my God. I feel like that could be a five-year-old or it could be a 22-year-old. Yeah. Like, it's one or the other. I feel like I could somehow still make that mistake yeah, exactly. now. <laughs> Number six says, early one winter morning, while my mother was making breakfast, three-year-old me saw my reflection in the stainless steel toaster and thought, I think I'll give that handsome young man a kiss. And that's when I learned hot things are hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would hurt you know, so bad. Your lips are sensitive, too. That would hurt. The only thing worse is if he did it twice. <laughs> yeah, he didn't learn. Number five <laughs> says, when I was a kid, my older brother told me butter and peanut butter were the same thing. Oh, no. Because he knew how much I loved peanut butter. So one day, while my parents were out, I ate an entire tub of margarine. Oh, my God. That makes me want to vomit. Waiting oh. for the flavor to get better. Oh, God. Oh. My mom came home and saw what I did and took me to urgent care for a butter overdose. Oh my I didn't know you can have a butter overdose. <laughs> That's amazing. That's Number four says, growing up, my brothers and I used to play a game where we would light matches and then throw them at each other, pretending they were fire arrows. Yeah. Cool. Genius, guys. Throw lit matches. That sounds fun. Actually. Yeah, it does yeah. sound fun. I'd like to do that Don't now. Don't do that. What are you, you're advocating Good for this. Idea. There's some kid listening that's like, yeah, me too. It says we would do this everywhere, sometimes outside, but also chasing each other. And one day... A rogue fire arrow landed on the upholstered couch. Oh, no. No, don't do it inside. But that's the first time I met a fireman in person, so it was kind of oh, cool. So they caught fire. the couch on fire. <laughs> There's no good place to throw fire, kids. We're just going to establish that right now. Number three, during the winter in third grade, a bunch of us invented, <clears throat> excuse me, a bunch of us invented a fun game to play on the icy parking lot where okay. we would tuck our arms into big puffy coats and then run into each other like bumper cars. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds so painful. Yeah. We called it Bubble Boom. Oh my god. That's a good name boom. for it. What you should have called it is Concussion. That's yeah. what you should have called it. <laughs> like human bumper cars? It says it was a fun game. <clears throat> Jeez. It says it was a... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. There we go. Allergies. Let me get some water. <laughs> ah, much better. Okay. There you it go. says it was a fun game until someone... Knocked into me from behind, yeah. and down I went face first into the asphalt oh. with my hands still tucked into my jacket. So you can't even Ouch. embrace the fall. Dude, yeah, I learned the hard way that you shouldn't even run with your hands <laughs> in your pocket. Okay. It says I needed two new teeth later that day. Oh, yeah, no. that is not shocking to anybody. <laughs> We're talking about some of the dumbest things people have ever done as kids, because there was a new survey on the internet about it. Number two says, my favorite toy growing up was my red remote control car. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. a good toy to I have, love man. remote control cars. Well, well, one day the batteries died, and I didn't have any new... God, this is ridiculous. Puberty, man. <clears throat> <laughs> Talking about being a kid, and all of a sudden I start going through puberty. <laughs> <clears throat> start that one over. It says, my favorite toy growing up was my red remote control car. Well, one day... The batteries died, oh, and no. I didn't have any new ones to replace them. Okay. So I came up with a smart idea. Oh, no. I thought I could recharge them if I put the batteries in the microwave. <gasps> no! In the freezer, oh, baby! Yeah. No. Not the microwave! Not even! It says, <laughs> luckily, my mom ran in and hit stop after it started to make explosion noises. Oh, thank yeah. God for mothers. 
But I like how it's only after it started to make explosion noises. Like, it probably right. has flames billowing out of it Already. by the time mom gets there. Yeah, it probably Melting. took a while. And the number one dumbest thing that I ever did as a kid, according to this survey, says, I remember when I was seven years old, before they had caller ID, I dialed 911 as a prank call and told dispatch, quote, close their butts and shut up. Good. That's such a good joke, yeah, by the way. Yeah, that is, that's better than the refrigerators Dude, running away. That like, is an amazing seven-year-old joke. Close your butts and shut up. Tell 911 to close their butts and shut up. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. It says, I, of course, thought it was hilarious, but I didn't think that they do callbacks. They did, and oh. that's when I told them again to close their butts and shut up. Oh, they Sticking right with the it. joke. Love it. Yeah. Ten minutes later, they actually sent a police car to my house, and a yeah. cop got out and told my mom, your son told us to close our butts. <laughs> I was grounded for a week. That's oh. it? Just a week That's for that? That's it? Yeah, what kind of parents do you have? Yeah. Awesome Man, cultural. good for you. No wonder you're calling 911 and telling them about their butts. Yeah, you're probably still doing that to this day. Yeah, one week. Like, What's Ooh, the consequence? Nothing's going to happen. I can tell anybody I want that to close like their butts good, and shut up. That's like a good yeah. phone tap idea for you, dude. Text in at 78592. <laughs> Call us 866 866- 668-4692. What's the dumbest thing you remember doing oh as a child? Getting such good texts already. We'll take your calls and your text messages right after this. It's 866-668-4692. Text us 78592. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. We have a text in at 78592 that says, I called 911 and told them my babysitter was dead. Oh my that God. probably no. didn't work out very well. Hopefully, there's not a text that follows up that says, I, I was being honest. She was, and I did it. Oh, that is, Brooke and that is in the morning. dark, man. Uh, we're talking about stupid things that you did as a kid. We just read a survey where people answered that question. What's the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? And so we'll take your text messages and your phone so calls. 866-668-4692. Text us 785 Nine two. Amanda, what's the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? <laughs> oh, it was pretty dumb. <laughs> um, so <laughs> when I was little, mm-hmm. um, my my best friend, she had braces, mm-hmm. and I didn't. And I was so jealous because I wanted to, like, put color stuff in my teeth. Like, right. I don't know. I was stupid. Like the little right. bands. Um, <laughs> yeah, the little bands. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And um, so I came up with my own, like, genius idea. Um, so every night before bed, <laughs> I would break up pieces of fruit roll-up, and I would put them in between my teeth what? and try and, like, get them to spread out. Oh, my God. That just sounds like <laughs> oh one big cavity yeah. waiting to oh, happen. No. Ow. Um, <laughs> Dude, if you're trying to get your teeth to spread out. That would hurt. Did it work? yeah. Uh, no, um, okay. I got seven cavities in one dentist visit. Damn. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But you got yeah. to a lot, eat a lot of fruit roll-ups. Good. And you get to be the only kid who actually wanted braces. Yeah. Ever. I know. God. Yeah. Well, if all your friends have braces and they got cool colors on them, you're like, dude, yeah. I wish I had like blue rubber bands on I my was, teeth. I was teeth. so dorky with my big glasses and I finally got contacts when I was a junior in high school and so I started to be kind of cool mm-hmm. and I and I lost one of my contacts but I refused to wear my glasses because I didn't want to <laughs> downgrade myself. So I went for a month with only being able to see out of one eye <laughs> and I just shut one eye the rest of the class. <laughs> hey, Laura, what's the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? So when I was a kid, I had a contest with my brother to see which one of us could stare at the sun the longest. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I did that. <laughs> yeah. It hurts. Did Don't do bro- that. Did your brother set well, you up, or were you both really in it? Oh, no. This was, like, the best plan both of us came up with. Okay. We were like a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you're, you're like, this is going to be so fun. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I bet you I'll beat you. Best. Yeah, <laughs> He can read Braille now, yeah, but exactly. that's okay. <laughs> and how did that play out for you? I'm surprised we both can't read Braille because we stared at it for a solid 10 minutes. Oh, my and gosh. My, <laughs> my mom looked out the window and, like, freaked out. Like, she came running outside. She was like, what are you doing? We're like, oh, we're having a staring contest with the sun. Yeah. The sun's going to win, just so you yeah. know. Yeah, the sun mom. always wins. Yeah, the sun that, does win that contest situ- situ- every single time. A text in at 78592 says, as a little kid, I used to eat the pages of our cooking book. What? Because apparently... I thought that they would taste like the food in the picture. That would be genius. Can someone come up with that invention? It says, looking back, the weirdest part is I ate several pages and never figured it out. Yeah. Like not after one page, they were like, that doesn't taste like steak at all. 
Hey, oh, Keith, oh, what man. is the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? What's going on, guys? Hey, what's, Not much. what's, what's the dumbest dumb... thing? All right, so, so when I was a kid, I, I actually pooped my pants oh. so I could go home. Uh, from school and play PlayStation. Yeah, because that's not going to get you bullied for the next couple years. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, so like when I got home, my, my mom my mom asked me about it um, because I that, that's what I told her, um, and she was all skeptical about it, and she was asking me for like my dirty my dirty underwear and whatnot, um, and I told her that I left them at school and I walked home naked. Oh right, because she's gonna oh. buy that one. Yeah, because you didn't actually. Yeah. Did you actually poop, or you did? You just told me. No, them. no, no. I didn't actually poop my pants. Oh, oh see, that's yeah. the problem. You gotta yeah. go all the way with yeah. it if you're gonna I make that, that claim. One too. <laughs> we yeah, got... she, yeah, she. She ended up calling the principal, uh, and uh, obviously my story didn't match up. Yeah. About uh, walking home naked and whatnot, so I ended up getting detention like for like a week after that. So. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I like the. I like the text that we got in that says, when I was a kid in second grade, I didn't want to go to school, so I went out back, rubbed poison ivy all over my body from head to toe. Oh. It didn't show up right away, so I kept rubbing. It was the worst month of my life. Oh, oh I bet. Wow, my God. When I was a kid, I actually went to the bathroom outside, like would pee outside uh-huh. in a patch of poison oak. Oh, uh-huh. God. It was. I had to go to the hospital for it. It was really? so bad, yeah. Oh, no. And until I was like a teenager, every time I would sweat, I would get poison oak like around my butt. It oh. would come back out. Really? Yeah. That stuff stays with you for that long. It, well, the way I had it, it was okay. it was like, it was super bad. STD, How dude. are you peeing in the woods? We need to discuss your. I, your you your, don't yeah, want to know. <laughs> hey, Geneva, what's the dumbest thing you did as a kid? Geneva. She Geneva? called the radio station and there? hung up. That was the dumbest thing. Oh, I'm here. Yeah. I'm sorry. What's the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? Um, you know the shopping network. Yeah. QB, QBC. Mm-hmm. I ordered a about a three thousand dollar necklace <gasps> when I was about seven years old off my mom's credit card. Oh, oh my gosh! No. That how did you do that? I mean, oh my god! I, gu- I oh. guess maybe your mom. In the had middle bo- of the night when she was sleeping. Uh huh. And when it came in, she still kept it, and I got grounded for about two and a half Wait, months. She kept it. She kept it. <laughs> like she. She's, She's like, like, oh, look at this present. I am so angry at you, but this is fantastic. Yeah. And I have an event coming up that this would be perfect for. Thank you so oh much. And one day, when you're older and I'm about to die, you can have it. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Go to your room. Text us, 78592. Call us, 866-668-4692. What's the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? It's Brook and Jubal in the morning. Text in at 78592. says, I remember when I was little, I used to wet my bed on purpose just so I could what? sleep in my parents' bed. Oh, oh my man, gosh. Just- <laughs> We're talking yeah. about the dumbest things you ever did as a kid. Call in 866 668 4692. Text in 785-92. Hey, Chris, what's the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? We used to take our bicycles up to the roof uh-huh. and ride them down and uh, take them into the pool. So we jump off the roof with our bicycle Whoa. into the pool. That sounds fun. Wow. Yeah, and none of that. you had a BMX uh, career in your future, right? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah. Did, did you get hurt? Your stupidity. Yeah. Did, did anybody get hurt? I'm sure. No, nobody got hurt until my dad caught us, and then we got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when you actually wanted to wear the helmet. It actually like, sounds ooh. kind of fun. <laughs> hey, Kara, what's the dumbest thing you ever did as a kid? I uh, dug up asphalt out of a pothole and buried myself in it. What? In a pothole? Wait, like in the middle yeah. of the road? No, like in our alley, there was a, a pothole, and it was the summertime. So it wasn't, it was done the day before, so it wasn't all dry. Oh. It was a little hot, so I scooped it out with a shovel and put it on my body like you would sand. Like, oh. like, like on the beach? That <laughs> sounds awful. That sounds... I thought I was on the beach, but I wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that sounds terrible. Did you burn what yourself? Happened? I, I didn't get burnt, but I did have, uh, like, tar stuck in, like, my little arm hair and my leg hair oh, and some in my head. Just tar. Got a no lot big of deal. <laughs> yeah, you just got a in a lot of tar. trouble. That must have taken forever for yeah. your parents to clean that off oh, of you. Man. It did. My mom was mad. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Got another text in at 78592. It says, when I was just a dumb little kid, I drank my mom's perfume because oh, I thought it would make my fart smell better. <laughs> Oh, my God. I want to know. Does that actually yeah, work? Yeah. Can you text back in, please? Just yeah. Whoever this is, text back in and let us know if it works. Because I've thought about doing that before, but I've never actually gone through with it. So good job. Moving 92.5.
Jewel in the Mornings.